<clears throat> Halloween Ends. Directed by David Gordon Green. Starring Jamie Lee Curtis. And company. Halloween Ends is the third and last of the Halloween trilogy. Starting, that had started in 2018 with Halloween. Um, then following up with Halloween Kills last year. And then finally with Halloween Ends. I have thoughts. And I want to share these thoughts with you. Without the drama, without the whatever. Because there's already a lot of drama out there. A lot of people are not happy with this movie. A lot of people out there do not like it. It's like 40% in Rotten Tomatoes and everything. Like, it's bad. Like, people are, like, saying it sucks, it's the worst. And they have reasons. Before I proceed, there will be light spoilers in this video. So, if you don't want to know a thing, watch, go watch the movie and then come back. And I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. I try to go in there with an open mind because there was a lot of anticipation that it would be bad. I didn't want to hear anybody's opinion and I didn't want to watch anybody's reviews until after I saw the movie myself. My daughter and I saw it and I'm not going to lie to you. It was all right. For me, it was all right. Let me explain. Follow me. I understand perfectly the reasons why people would not like this movie. There are things in it that, or may I say things not in it as much, that um, almost make it not a Halloween movie. Let me, let me give you the, the basic plot here. Um, four years after the events of Halloween Kills, Laurie Strode has found a new way of living it. She bought a house. She is writing a book. Uh, her granddaughter is living with her now since mom got killed and dad got killed. Uh, you know, and they're trying to move on. Uh, Michael Myers had disappeared without a trace. Nobody knows where he is. Meanwhile, this kid named Corey, right? Like college age student has, um, a mishap of his own a year after the events of Halloween Kills, a, a totally separated issue that kind of like affects him deeply when he, especially when he starts getting, you know, the, the community of Haddonfield kind of treats him as an outcast, uh, as a leper because of a error he made. A uh, terrible one. In the beginning of the movie, like, my mouth dropped open. It was that bad. Yeah, it was that bad. But what the, the idea is not even that. I think the idea is the after effect. What does it take to drive somebody to the point where they can't take it anymore? And we see Corey Cunningham. We see this character um, kind of, as in the course of the movie, start to be challenged with that choice of direction, either this way or that way. Needless to say, it's a very difficult thing. Lori, uh, knowing he's dating her, his, um, her, sorry, her, gra her granddaughter in the movie, and I knew it, as, I knew the moment. I knew the moment when I saw it. She knew that when she saw him, she was looking at Michael Myers. Not that Corey was Michael Myers. A lot of people were like, oh, it's a, it's a copycat. Careful. I am not quick to say this was a copycat scenario. It's not. I don't think it is, in my opinion. This was something else. This was something because, you know, Corey has his own encounter with Michael Myers. You see it in the in the trailer. You know, when that moment happens, something happens to Corey and it kind of breaks down the, the, the sense of fragility that he's been going through in the four years or three years after the events of what he went through. As a result, things get ugly. It's Halloween again. It's four years later. And his 
Corey's encounter with Michael Myers in what appears to be a sewer area, you see it in the trailer, changes everything, even to the point that Michael himself resurfaces to begin his killing spree. It, what's weird about it for me, what, what was the weirdest part about it was that in the same way that Laurie Strode didn't have much of a role to play in Halloween Kills, Michael Myers himself doesn't have much of a role to play in Halloween Ends. And I know that's odd because it should be about him, right? It should be about the shape. It should be about Michael Myers. And it is. And it's not. Are you confused? I sure was. But then as the movie continued to um, show me what the point of the story was, as the final confrontation, which we saw in the trailers between Laurie and, and, and Michael, that does happen. Um, and now without some good, decent kills, Michael Myers throws in there. It becomes a very tragic uh, scenario for Corey because Corey being in love with Laurie's uh, granddaughter and, and trying to like fix it for himself it's easy how one can descend into madness and all it takes is a, just a little nudge all it takes is a little nudge we've seen this before when I look at Halloween ends I'm reminded of Friday the 13th part 4 the final chapter when little Tommy, after hacking up Jason down to, to, to mincemeat, you see that look at the end of the movie that made the audience scream because something got transferred. Madness went somewhere else. We see that here in Halloween Ends. Do we see a final confrontation between Laurie and Michael Myers? Yes, we do. But it's not the confrontation, it's not the end that most people probably would have wanted. You know why? Because us as Halloween fans, we're so used to this franchise giving us a certain thing in a certain way. It happened in the first incarnation of, this, of the franchise. It happened in the second one, you know, part four, five, six. It happened with Rob Zombie's films. It happened with H2O and Resurrection. We demand more than these stories are able to give us. And as a result, not everybody's gonna be happy. Some will be, some won't be. In the context of the three films that I just finished watching these last few years, I'm satisfied. You know why I'm satisfied? Because it's just one incarnation of many. This is a franchise that uh, continues to reinvent itself over and over again. This is not gonna be the last time we're gonna see Michael Myers. You know somebody's gonna dish something else up down the line. This is David Gordon Green's vision. Executive producers, John Carpenter, himself, the inventor, the creator. Jamie Lee Curtis also as an executive producer. She gave many, many beautiful words of, of, of gratitude, both in New York City Comic Con and in other events, the opening of the, of the movie um, last week. That shows that she is grateful for Laurie Strode, and we all should be. We had an incredible run with Jimmy Lee Curtis in this incredible iconic role. Yet, still, the thing that bothers, that will bother many people the most in watching this film is whether or not they'll have enough of Michael Myers, or is it really the end of him? Well... You could see that for yourself, but I don't think that was the point. In fact, now that I look at it, I don't think it was the point of any of the three films. The point of the three films wasn't about how much damage Michael Myers can cause. I mean, Halloween Kills, if you want to like put all three together, Halloween Kills, that was mad damage. Like He went on a rampage. I, I loved it. Right? Everybody was, ooh, you know, and even and even that one, a lot of people didn't like because they didn't have enough lore. You, you see what I'm saying? Nobody's happy. The point of this film was something deeper than even Michael Myers himself. In Halloween Kills, the main theme was evil dies tonight. Remember that chant? In this film, 
it gives a different view. Not from anybody else, but from Lori Strode herself. She's writing this book, and in the book, she makes it very clear that evil doesn't die. It merely takes shape, changes, reinvents itself. We see that happen to Corey Cunningham in this film, who seems to be taking a took a took a bigger role in this movie than even Michael Myers. Now, don't get me wrong. There are good kills in this film. There are kills that made me cringe. I saw it happen. All right? But from, you know, I, I, I'm just saying. But what I'm trying to tell you is that it's not even about that at the end. I mean, yeah, sure. That's why we go to the movies to see this. So having said all that, having really thought about it, I'm going to give Halloween ends. Three coffee cups. I liked it. I liked it for what it was. Not for what I expected it to be. Not for what I've always seen Halloween to be. You know, it's it's not the greatest film. It had its flaws. Of course it did. They all do. They all have their flaws. This one had a strong message. I wouldn't even call it this film more less of a, of a horror film than I would a psychological thriller. It felt more psychological in nature, more thriller-esque in nature, if there is such a word. That's how I feel about Halloween Ends, because we've gone through that path before with Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. We've gone through the path of the franchise of evil not dying, but just merely changing shape. Hmm? You know how you felt at the end of this film, before the other ones came out and undid it, but when you saw this, as I did, we left that theater shook. Tell me your thoughts, talk to me, comment below, share with me. These were my thoughts. I want to hear what you have to say about this movie. If you want to crap on it, crap on it. If you want to praise it, praise it. But be real. Be real for yourself. Be real to me. Be real to everyone that you come in contact with when discussing this film. This is your eyes. These are your thoughts. They should be respected and honored. I hope you do the same for me. Ralph Perez, Horror and Coffee, Happy Halloween.